Would you guys be able to tell me a bit about your roles correlated to both of those uh, assets on your, for your company? How involved you guys are with either the web analytics or competitive intelligence tools your company's using? Sure. I guess I'll you see web analytics specific. My team, uh, this is Amanda. My team does online anal analytics for um, pretty much all of Allstate.com. Uh, we use Site Catalyst as our primary tool. Um, but we also have some other tools that we leverage too, like 4C and Opinion Lab, um, but primarily Site Catalyst. Okay, is that uh, is that your focus as well, Don and Bob? Or are you guys on a different uh, tier or different interest point? Uh, Amanda's on my team. I, I look at uh, data and analytics more broadly for e-business and, and uh, marketing. And then uh, Don's on the online too. Don owns uh, Allstate.com quote and the uh, self-service from my account sections of, of the website. Okay, no problem. On the side note, I saw that Amanda just went offline just to give a second. Uh, let me know if you're still there, Amanda. Yeah. I, I am on my my computer just froze, so apparently I got kicked out. So okay. apologies for that. Are you guys able to see the screen at this time? Or sound like at least one of you isn't able to, but I'm I'm still not on. But okay, go ahead. All right. So to introduce, um, I can see it. Points work. you can see the screen. It's just yeah, your primary domain is up there, correct? Yep. Okay. All right. So yeah. to intro. To introduce ourselves, UPCO, we're a uh, digital marketing intelligence company, and we provide uh, 360 web intelligence through an analytics and session recreation platform that's also synced to a competitive intelligence search engine. So uh, basically the premise of this discussion is just a 15-minute straightforward chat showing a few of our capabilities where um, at the end of that time we'll reconvene and talk about potential added value or interest on your guys' end. And uh, please feel free to interrupt me at any time. Okay, so, so on that note, the uh, first thing I'm going to be introducing is our analytics technology. Um, you, guys use, you guys use Site Catalyst. That's basically the norm from our clients or you know, enterprise these days is that or core metric. So I wanted to bring up beforehand that everything you're going to be, I'm going to be showing is modulized. It's able to complement, not replace. So that's an important point for anyone to move forward with. So. So first, uh, first relevant point here is when I'm on your website, allstate.com, um, Site Catalyst Traditional Analytics, the information that's generally being stored when a visitor visits your web page is the transition from page to page. You're basically getting a record from your server to let you know someone loaded, loaded something on your website or someone went from each particular page. The big difference between our company is we're storing every detail of the customer experience what that means is we're storing approximately a thousand times as many data points for each visitor and the way for practical usage that's usually comes in handy for forms when it comes down to mouse movement if someone hesitates over a security form for five seconds on your website we're able to track that information as a searchable data point and look through your past history and look at other scenarios where people move their mouse and we're stuck, for instance. Or um, someone enters an information into a contact form, we're storing each element pre-submit in a searchable format. So if someone writes help me on your website and they delete it, we're able to get the typing speed, we're able to understand the transition between one form field to the next. So this additional insight is all integrated with a, I guess, suppose traditional analytics backend to be able to dig a lot deeper, particularly into customer behavior and intent behind high value actions. The other end of that coin is because we're storing all of this information, um, we are also able to recreate all of it in a playable video. Do you guys use any kind of a session recreation technology currently? If you don't mind me asking, you mentioned you have a few usability tools on top of uh, using Site Catalyst. Yeah, we use Foglight. Okay. Oh, yeah, I just want to mention because I try to focus on differentiators anytime it's similar. So, so, so once again, I bring up the data first, but the relevance here is every time you look at a point of data from your analytics dashboard with our platform, you're able to play that record. So if you wanted to focus on a particular segment, such as customers who are abandoning after filling out an insurance form, you would be able to click play from the analy analytics directory 
analytics dashboard directly to basically see your entire customer's experience from the platform and details surrounding what they actually did. So uh, once again, it's relevant here too, because we're doing this, because we're storing everything you see as an individual searchable data point, it doesn't really require you to go ditch diving for information. You don't need to look through millions of videos. Um, you're able to detect dissatisf dissatisfaction patterns or other trends from videos in cases where you want more insight. And once you detect them, you're able to search and apply different business rules or patterns to past information. So what's relevant here usually any uh, enterprise these days is the level we go into mobile in particular. So what I'm going to be showing here is just a uh, quick mobile session that highlights basically if someone visits your website from a mobile phone, you know, their visit's a lot different than from a traditional computer. They're using their fingers, they're navigating with their fingers, and the value of a visit, a page view, a load is going to be different. You know, we're all kind of in discovery, still kind of figuring that out. So what we're able to do here, this is our proprietary technology, is we are the first company who's able to detect all of the finger movement points. So you can see exactly what your customers are doing from a mobile phone, and you're also able to use that as supplemental data as well. Let me, before I explain that, let me I'll let this play for a few seconds. So the takeaways there, the orange and blue, where um, we are differentiating between the first and second touch point with the user's fingers. So the orange was the initial touch point, someone using the right, the right hand, then using their left hand to scroll forward and back on your website from a mobile device. Obviously, the other takeaway there is orientation, zooms, <coughs> slips, everything detectable from a mobile phone is both playable in the same environment that the customer entered your site, and it's also searchable as a data record to do custom analysis for mobile as opposed to normal visits. You guys have any questions at this point, or should I move forward? Don, we're flying okay. blind, so you're going to have to navigate here. Yeah, no, I'm glad I don't have any questions at this point. No problem. Thank you. Okay, and to start out too, what I'm going to be showing is just a couple of our differentiated capabilities here. This is all integrated. Your starting point here would be looking at macro-based data. You know, you, you could look at any traffic segment and supplement with the views I'm showing you. So what you're going to be seeing here is a recreation of live traffic on your website. What this means is our video recreation. If you wanted to take a look at visitors who came from Canada to Allstate and had made five five past purchases or an abandoned a particular form. You can, you can highlight that segment of traffic and click go live. And you're able to see in real time a live view as if you're over the shoulder of uh, multiple sessions at once to basically either determine any usability issues on your end or you could focus on a particular visit and engage them directly via live chat or if you wanted to sync a current CRM or phone system. It's just about being able to supplement um, any current customer servicing with the ability to view what the customer's doing. Uh, it's relevant here from a capability standpoint. We have a couple patents pending on this technology. This is the um, first variation, this capability, where it doesn't require a download, and it's able to do it on a multi-session basis as well. So basically, your live traffic, you can peak in any, in any case, and it's all synced within our analytics platform as well which, of course, for segmentation and user profiling sake, you can only look at particular segments of interest. Okay, uh, the other note from here, the last view I'm going to show you for, from our micro view is um, we click view details. We click view details directly from this live view. What we're going to be displaying here is the entire history of one particular website visitor from one view. Second. Yeah, team viewer slows us down every time. So what this is in this example is this is a particular session selected for this customer. I went straight from the live view and looked at their history. Underneath here, we're, um, we're, storing, we're storing a snapshot of every page visited that we integrate into our analytics dashboard, which in most cases people can get a lot more insight taking a look at a panoramic view as opposed to just digging through data. 
Um, the relevant aspect of this view here is you can go back to customer's past history. And for that same customer, whether or not you want to define it by IP address, cookie, or integrate with your current uh, permissions or login system, you can look at past visits, click view details, and switch from that particular customer's history. So this record here is created for every visitor on your website. And the practical use here is for anonymous pre-transaction visitors being able to identify and target them better and really just uncover anything that may not be apparent from um, top-level data. The other detail to mention here is we're not going to dig too deep in our this discussion, but in every view that we have videos shown, we also have data that can be completely customized to your company's KPIs, such as if you wanted to see customer history and you wanted to sync um, you wanted to sync a particular tag, a particular segment to be displayed, such as in your case, someone who's filed a claim, let's say, you would be able to tag that information and be able to see it from each view. Any questions on this end? On my end, it's about five more minutes of just showing you a couple of basic modules and see how it relates. So. Um, is any, how do you how do you maintain sort of the stream of, of contacts? Is this all cookie-based? By default, it's set by IP, and we're also storing a cookie, which you can change how you want to define a customer. Does that make sense? So, yeah, so the sessions are strung together based on IP and cookie on both? It, by default, it's by IP, but we can seamlessly switch to cookie, or we can switch to any permission-based system, such as your login, if you guys have a login and okay. integrate with a permission-based so. Okay. Do you see any problems with that with, with certain ISPs? Um, I mean, nothing's going to be per Justin, do you have any comments on the multi-channel? Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still you know, there. A bit. The is question there was, right? if we had any experience any problems with that over different ISPs, yeah, I mean, like, based on, based on how some ISPs allocate IP address, sometimes we see sort of like a concentration of users when we look at IP address from a certain region, but or, but we know that, you know, it's it's impossible. Just, it's, you know, it just happens to be the way that we're tracking IP or, or how it's assigned R by Right. By I the mean, ISP. there are some ISPs, AT&T, for instance, uh, uh, like we're located in La Jolla, California, uh, when we do a GOIP lookup on some uh, services, it shows us that existing in Missouri. So there are inconsistencies at times, but generally speaking, it's like 98% accurate based on you know every IP address and zip code, uh, postal code for the United States. Cool. Yeah. And someone up on the line, I think, mentioned that they were the owner of the self-servicing uh, department within Offset. Yep, that's me. Okay, so you're in charge of basically the um, any current policyholders that I'm logging into their account and managing, and submitting any information into their account. Correct. Okay, so this would be a great example when you say cookie or IP, uh, the ability for us to basically use their login information and keep it uh, a record of their entire customer lifecycle throughout every section of your website, in addition to you know what they do when they log into your uh, customer portal, uh, portal. Okay. Yeah, my answer was going to be, that's what I get asked every time. It's impossible to be perfect, and that's why we give the flexibility dependent on use case to determine by IP login or IP address, or by um, cookie. So, so uh, sorry, did I cut someone off, or are you guys good to move forward? Good at the moment. No problem. Um, what I'm going to be showing here, this is probably uh, takes a while to get super targeted to solve a problem for <laughs> until I know what your company's uh, pain points are, but I'm going to give a very basic example in this case of problem that was solved based off the data storage. The videos are pretty straightforward understanding. You can see everything from the customer's view, but a lot of companies' biggest question comes down to this extra data. Why do I want this you know, pile of data? I wanted to give uh, one very simple scenario we had with a financial institution um, who wanted us basically to take a close look at their wealth management page. And what they wanted to do is they, uh, we took a pilot with them and they asked us in three months to show the statistics to let them qualify a wealth management client to be upsold. They basically said, I want more information about where you can create more segments to how qualified the target is. 
So what we did here is um, we customize a lot of our analytics. We, we take a look at a high-value portion of a company such as your site. If you gave the process such as filling out a claim form, we would create customized statistics based off uh, analyzing the data that usually correlate to customer security, confidence, or intent. In this case, if someone made multiple selections before choosing what their investable assets were, and they spent at least 10 seconds filling out information within the comment form, we were able to give a confidence level saying if someone makes three choices before submitting one pre-submit, that probably means that they're going to change their mind of where they're currently at. That was the, uh, so we created this on a macro level basis for their entire form, so they have few metrics that are able to improve over time to say we want more confident decisions based on our site layout. And the other scenario here was what we were able to identify is to upsell, to upsell, uh, they wanted to know how they could basically upsell clients at a higher percentage because they didn't have the resources to go after every everyone who's within wealth management. So we created custom tags to say if a client chooses a higher value, such as 250 to 500,000, then chooses a lower value and spends over 10 total seconds in the form, that that person is a better upsell target. Because on common sense, if you're at a restaurant and you order a burger for $20, you change your mind, you order a salad for 10, there's a pretty good chance you have $20 in your pocket. So that premise was very successful in that case, kind of using this extra data and also making sure that we always qualify any of these statistics saying that we're trying to get rid of robots or automated traffic that just makes selections automatically, you know, to make sure that they're actually engaging the phone for a few seconds. So that was just a practical use scenario of the usage of the extra data. It almost always comes down to the high value call to action and understanding customer intent or being able to segment them on more criteria. The last note to mention here, because um, within our module itself, aside from macro level data, because we're storing information pre-submit, we usually, a request we get from a company would be to create a custom record for all abandoned visits before they submit information. So you wouldn't have to go through videos, you wouldn't have to look through the entire page visit. We would be able to customize any form to only output what was entered, even in cases where it wasn't submitted. So a common sense potentially for an insurance company, of course, would be to take a tag from a particular client claim and be able to set up a filter such as if someone says, my dog died, delete, 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 before filling out their claim, you would be able to tag and search through that information as well. So the main takeaway here is um, it's not a data dump. We just have the capability to define these metrics with a sharper, with a sharper uh, microscope. Any questions on that end, you guys? I don't at the moment. I, I don't know about uh, Amanda and Bob. No, I'm good. Yeah, I'm, okay. So we're... No problem. So, um, you know, we don't usually dig too deep into um, all of the, you know, these analytics products. We have quite a few modules. We can spend hours going through case by case for a future request. But it's going to bring up a couple more scenarios I think you guys might use and kind of give the way that we add value to that scenario. Um, do you guys use conversion funnels or heat maps by chance within your analytics? Are either of them particularly of importance? What was the question again? I'm sorry. Are you guys currently actively using either conversion funnels or heat maps for click or mouse movement? We're not using heat maps that I'm aware of. Uh, we use conversion funnels within like Catalyst, if that's what you're asking. Okay. All right. So um, I just wanted to give the big example of kind of supplementing what you're currently doing. Um, when it comes to conversion funnels, if you're defining a conversion funnel with Insight Catalyst. You know, you get the, if you want to take a look, if you determine that five different users had abandoned a particular process, you see that number five, but you kind of have to go back to the drawing board to figure out what caused those people to abandon. Within our module, we're able to, within conversion funnels, look at the individual visit and play the video only of those abandoned visitors. So in a lot, I believe I'm in the wrong site to show a good example, but the point being here is in a lot of cases you're able to determine that it was a website-based error that caused someone to drop out of a conversion cycle. It could be an error with responsive design for a particular module. 
The main takeaway is that's usually the best uh, practical use to supplement what you're currently doing, is to take a closer look only at potential uh, pain points. Does that make sense to you, uh, that, that example? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Well, this time I'll just mention, uh, yeah, we have quite a few different, um, we have quite a few different modules integrated to be able to slice and dice the data. Um, all of the data can be kept either for a week, a month, or long term. We can, everything that you see within our back end is custom source, it's built in-house, and it's integrated into the same data source, which gives us a lot of flexibility to custom fit a piece to a particular company setup that's using a different tool. So, um, you guys have any questions before I give a few minute overview on the competitive intelligence? No, I don't have anything. Okay. Yeah, and probably uh, we don't, well, go ahead. I was just going to move forward and give you a few minute, uh, so about finish, like, what, what don't you, if you can please finish your sentence. Yeah, I, we, um, I was, is they don't spend too much time on the competitive intelligence stuff. I mean, I think that oftentimes is a nice enough for us, and, and we don't, you know, we don't look at uh, this, the three of us, and, well, I won't speak for Don, but I, I know that um, our team doesn't, my team doesn't necessarily look at CI that often. Okay. Is that everyone on the phone as well? Yeah, it's pretty accurate. I mean, most of the CI stuff we do is very point-oriented, so as we're going to optimize something, in one of our given applications, we'll often research at that point. We don't generally do broad sweeping um, CI type stuff. No problem. Okay, so I'll give it a 20 second overview. If it's uh, um, our company stores 180 million unique website domains in one database. It's uh, the first complete website database. Google has approximately 30 million. Bing has 20-ish million, and we provide competitive intelligence to see the trends between traffic ramp rank that your competitors take and the correlations and changes, such as they have Facebook spikes, they have a change in headline, et cetera, et cetera. I'll, I'll cut it off at that point if it's not relevant to you guys. So the main takeaway there is we have this directly integrated into our analytics module because a lot of cases someone might want to output data from the competitive intelligence within their analytics directly. So. So let me uh, take a step back in that case and ask uh, what are your guys' thoughts or takeaway from uh, what you've seen so far? For I'll tell you, most, most uh, enterprises I speak to, the mentality is um, we're not trying to replace the amateur core metrics in the short term. We're going to be employed on a pilot for a particular portion of your site where the liability on our end is going to be sh to show the additional analytics and added value, so to speak. So I'll just, I'll preface with that and just, you guys, any feedback from your end or? Well, I, it, it was, uh, my apologies, it was hard for me to follow because I, I, I think I missed half of it. And um, and uh, I just have some basic questions. Um, how do you guys, how does this get deployed? I mean, is it all, do you have to basically deploy a tag on, on every single page of the site or, or what? And then can you give me an idea just from a, at a very high level how you, how you price? The tagging is set up, it's on a page basis, but we usually attach it to one element that's used site-wide. So you don't need to go through and individually tag each page. So I guess uh, to be real simple about it, it is a tagging system, um, we're, but we're also able to plan it on your server directly for someone who doesn't want to manually tag pages. It's a web-based application, it's not on-premise by default as well. So, Did that answer your first question? Okay. Second question is our pricing for the most part is based on variable website traffic. To give you a ballpark, we're in the $5,000 for a million um, unique page views. That's our ballpark starting point. And from there, we, it's obviously going to go down a lot if you go to higher levels of volume. Um, aside from that, our only hard cost is upfront setup depending on how much customization and integration is needed. For an average organization, we're looking at 15 to 25 hours at a 250 an hour uh, range. And that was annual or monthly on the 5,000 per million? Uh, that's monthly. Okay. 
So that, that's an estimate. I will say to get a uh, firm price, we do run a load test. Our, our hard cost isn't actually page views directly. Once we go above, you guys are going to be significantly above that. If we go above the 5, 10 million range, we run a day load test because our hard cost is how much movement is actually on your site. If that makes sense. So. Justin, do you have anything to add in that regard? Anything I missed from the implementation on there? Uh, no, but I think because a couple of them weren't able to actually see a lot of the things that you were demonstrating, I think it'd be helpful to send a demonstration uh, link for the recording off to them. So if there were any questions they might have had, had they been able to see what you were saying or put a visual on it, it would be a lot easier to comprehend it. Um, I think Bob said that he was unable to see half of it or understand half of it because of that. So uh, with that, so I think that would be very helpful. Yes, that would be very grateful. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's probably a pretty big gap missing on our end. Um, yeah, other point just to uh, mention again when we talk pricing, uh, we do have the capability to also filter to say we only want to capture and add this microscope to one-tenth of the visits on a particular page as well. Um, just the capability is to do it on your entire structure, but when it comes to the hard cost, we have flexibility on any point, any page, any increment. All of those things are completely open depending on your specific business need. Um, last detail on that end, I suppose, is uh, what we get from a lot of, uh, lot of enterprises is concern about having the in-house capability to utilize, you know, more data, deeper microscope. Um, we provide, by default on a pilot, we provide 10 hours of servicing to come up with these kind of charts, and we'll usually have a top-level discussion to say what is the highest value segment of your website, and we would be able to kind of have our analysts take a look and come up with practical use cases on request. So I guess that's it on our end. Um, any other questions or feedback, or are you guys good for the most part? I'm good from, at least from my perspective, I think we have some more conversations to have in our I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So to close on my end, I'll say um, we are available to take a deeper dig into any individual module. All of this stuff is a lot easier to do, you know, taking a look at the actual back end as opposed to basic docs. Um, if you can ask me um, from relevance, other than sending you guys a basic overview, maybe a one-pager, and the links. Is there any other information you guys would have request to potentially, you know, uh, take a next step forward and discuss in detail? Uh, no, I mean, I think in addition to what you what you just stated, um, you know, maybe, uh, and I don't know if it'll be in the information that you send over, but understanding the use cases and then just sort of how, um, um, sort of just uh, laying out for us how others are, are other companies, other clients of yours are, are supplementing uh, uh, what they already have from an analytics perspective with what you do. Um, you know, I think um, certainly resources is always going to be a consideration that we take into account as well as cost. But um, you know, uh, I, I think uh, maybe it was just that I didn't get to see a lot of this, but um, I was maybe a little bit, I was struggling a little bit to understand the value add on, a, on top of the, on top of, you know, when I think about what we do already, we, you know, as Amanda said, we, we while we don't use heat maps, we do a lot of, we have what we call a stock, and we already do a lot of that sort of funnel analysis, and we've actually put a lot of um, uh, effort into that. Uh, in addition, there are certain constraints from, from a development standpoint that don't allow, that doesn't allow us to be as nimble as we'd like to be in terms of acting on some of these insights. So, um, you know, we have to balance that with sort of how did we deepen into some of the things that we look at. So um, it would be helpful for me to understand how other clients are using it sort of and, and how they're, you know, uh, using what you guys provide in addition to their sort of base level of analytics. Let me ask you, is there any key point of interest that, I mean, most companies are using two particular modules from their analytics a lot heavier than the others. Um, aside from conversion funnels, is there any other than general particular path analysis that you guys put a lot of time and effort into? Within Play Catalyst? Uh, yeah, within, yeah, you within, yeah, any any site catalyst or any tool you just something that you actually use a lot, not just as their capability wise. I think we use them all. Um, 
I'm not sure which ones. I, have. I mean, we definitely do a lot of pathing analysis, you know, from what page are people going, where are they dropping off. Um, we do a lot with marketing channels. Um, I'm not sure. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't have it in front of me, so it's okay. hard to, I'm still getting my computer to, to boot back up, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Um, I think we're good then. Yeah, just uh, did, did, let me ask you, uh, did the example I gave with the conversion funnel, did that make sense when we talk about how this is integrated, to be able to click directly on the abandoned visitors and take a look at why they abandoned? Did that make sense, I suppose, from the analogy? Yeah, it, yeah. it, it did to me. Uh, okay. Go ahead, Amanda. We do very similar stuff with Foglight. Um, we're able to build... Um, people who made it to a certain page but didn't make it to another, and then look at those sessions. So we already have some of that capability built in with what we already have. Okay. So yes, right. it definitely made sense. Um, it's just not a direct integration between Site Catalyst and Spotlight. Okay. All right. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, that was just the general use case for all these is answering the why is, you know, the total value proposition of being able to see from the exact scenario regardless of data. That's uh, just a lot of times it provides clarity to find website errors, responsive design, anything you wouldn't think to look for. So. All right, well, uh, I appreciate the conversation. I uh, hope the weather gets better on your guys' end, and I'll follow up with you guys shortly. Um, if you guys want to take a deeper dig, once again, our contact information will be attached. Please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Thank cool. you. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. No problem. Bye. Bye. Bye.